And I'll tell you what, Dave Revs and Ben Bruss with you on the big show. They were competitors in this game because early on, LSU was red hot in the first half. It kind of looked like maybe Michigan might end up somehow overmanned in this game, but they responded really each and every time LSU made a run, and to think they did it without Isaiah Livers, it's really impressive. It really was a total team effort, and I think we talked about it in the highlights there. Shawnee Brown was phenomenal off the bench. Michigan shot 57% from the field in the first half and only found themselves up one. But Dave, I thought the difference in the game was the way Michigan defended at the end of the first half and at the start of the second half. To end the first half, LSU was 1 of 10 from the field, and they didn't score a field goal until 13 minutes left in the second half. So once they established themselves in that half court, there was it was still a game of runs, and I had a great time watching the game be played. You had two guys on LSU play 40 minutes. Franz Wagner did not play great in that first half, but the way he stepped up offensively and defensively with that big three you saw on the highlight as well, there was a possession where LSU was down six. It was about two minutes left. Franz Wagner was guarding Cam Thomas, who was LSU's best scorer. Cam Thomas probably thought it was a mismatch as a big guy, but Wagner did what he's done all season. He could guard four, he can guard one, he can guard everyone on the floor, got a stop, knocked down a three, and that was the difference of the game. Yeah, held LSU to 39% in this game. And again, look, Cam Thomas was great, Javante Smart was great. This is a really yeah. talented team, and I, I was just impressed, again, the response from Michigan each time that they needed it. And this is a team, I mean, you know, without Isaiah Livers, this has been a very average team over the last two years. In fact, going into the NCAA tournament, we're under 500 without Isaiah Livers. He is a huge part of what they do, Ben, and to respond in the way that they did is really something. There were times where I, I had said to myself, man, they could really use Isaiah Livers because I thought Michigan did a great job offensively in the second half touching Hunter Dickinson. And Hunter Dickinson has shown throughout the season, Dave, he's willing to skip, get the ball across the floor, get others involved. Michigan missed a couple shots early. I was like, if that's Isaiah Livers, I think that one's going down. Also, the versatility he has defensively. A big win, I think, for confidence as well for Michigan from a team standpoint. I mentioned four straight Sweet 16s. Only other school in the country that can make that claim right now is Gonzaga. So some heavy company in for the Wolverines. Uh, he certainly did. He was phenomenal. We'll talk about Garza in a moment. It's disappointing for Iowa, no doubt. I mean, they were a two seed. It's tied for the highest seed in school history. End up bowing out in the round of 32 and just felt like they had no answers on the defensive end. Ben. No, and it really started with the guard play, in my opinion. The three starters on offense were 0 of 8 from the field but also had trouble defensively keeping those Oregon guards in front of them. A lot of dribble penetration, a lot of back cuts right behind the defense. And we talked a lot about how Iowa had been getting better defensively towards the end of the season. I think they got caught in a little bit of that first half of thinking we could outscore this team and maybe got a little bit away from those defensive principles that got them, got them to this point. But again, overall, getting zero points from your three guards that start for you was tough to overcome. Now, they had been fourth in the Big Ten since February 10th in defensive efficiency, gave up nearly 1.3 points per possession. When you give up 11 threes in a game and also allow 46 points in the paint, yeah. it is really hard yeah. to win the game. You said dunk fast. And in, it felt yeah, well, it was 10 dunks, 10 yeah. dunks they had in the game. Garza, he was phenomenal again, as he has been his entire career. Put what he did into perspective, if you would. Well, I just think I enjoyed what he did today because what we saw today in their game that they lost is a Luca Garza that we saw in his entire career. I got a little bit of emotional watching him go off the floor because he embodies what is all about college basketball. A guy who stayed for four years, set a great example, as Coach McCaffrey said, for the guys that are coming. And I just I felt for him because he put it all on the line. He played great today. And he battled inside. He hit shots from the outside. He did everything he could. And that's how he played his entire career. He left everything on the floor, and he's got everything to be proud of. Yeah, and got everything that he could out of his vast talents. He's yes. an incredibly talented guy and handled himself with incredible class yes. from the very beginning, throughout all of his successes, and in a loss as well on Monday that I know was a devastating defeat. You can see the emotion there from Daryl Morcel. He revealed after the game he was playing with a fracture in his labrum. I mean, he, is, he epitomizes toughness, that young man. And that's what this team was this year. Mark Turgeon mentioned it. They were very undersized. 
and yet they battled. I don't think a lot of people thought they would end up in the NCAA tournament. Certainly didn't look like it at midseason, but they turned it on and, and ended up, as he said, one of the top 32 teams in the country. Now, all season, they looked like a bubble team, and in my opinion, I didn't think they were going to make it into the tournament, but what did I know? I didn't know what Mark Turgeon was preaching to this team and how he really got them to recognize what they needed to do together. They lost a point guard that was there forever and carried them in second halves of game late. They lost a shot blocker in Jalen Smith. They, they really missed those two pieces, but still found a way to win a game in the NCAA tournament. And I think you see that in the emotion from Daryl Morsell. The team did battle. And Eric Ayala, a lot of guys playing out of position. And I think you got to tip the cap to Maryland for what they were able to accomplish this season. Yeah, a team that was picked 10th in the unofficial preseason poll of the Athletic and the Columbus Dispatch in the Big Ten. And again, look, failed to make it out of the first weekend of the NCAA tournament. And I know it's frustrating, eighth time in their last nine tourneys. But to get to the tournament with this group, I thought, was a massive achievement.